What's going on guys, Asian Guy here, bringing you a pseudo tier list of sorts for people who are new to the genre of RPGs or gachas. So if you've never played something like Breath of the Wild, or you've never played something like Final Fantasy games, and you have no idea what you're doing in Genshin Impact, but it looks pretty, so you decide to hop on, this video is for you. If you have never rolled in gacha, re-rolling is essentially the act of making multiple accounts or starting your account over and over and over again until you get the character or characters that you want to summon and start off with them to essentially save yourself a few more summons for the future. Now, unfortunately, as many of you guys know in Genshin Impact, tier lists went flying around immediately as the game launched. And a lot of these tier lists were misinformed or just didn't research enough and they have misplaced a lot of very good characters such as Bennett, such as Sing Chu, very low down their tier list because they simply thought they just looked lame. I was also a victim of that. I saw these tier lists, I'm like, I'm never touching Bennett. I'm never touching Sing Chu because they're not cool. I thought because if you don't look cool, you're not good. So I was one of those simpletons, but we have ascended and we know which characters are amazing, which characters are not amazing. But the, the main point that I want to get clear here, guys, right at the start is every character can be made to be a very good character. Whether it's a free to play character or not doesn't really matter. Every character can be viable. This is the greatest thing about Genshin Impact is honestly you can play with any character and succeed as long as you know what you're doing, as long as you're playing correctly. And when I say correctly, I mean investing into the characters and giving them the artifacts to make them succeed. So every character can indeed succeed. Obviously, there are other characters that can shine a bit more in certain scenarios than one another. But, you know, that's essentially the diversity side of the game and where the gacha kind of sucks you in. You have these shiny five-star characters that do really good things or these shiny four-star characters that do really good things for X or Y. And it's essentially, you know, the, the missing piece to the puzzle that you want. And that's how they grab your money. But in January 2021, you have free-to-play players using only free-to-play characters to complete the hardest content in the game. So if you're wondering if this game is paid to win and you can only beat the hardest content paid to win, no. It's, it's not paid to win in that sense. Obviously, it makes your life easier like all other gacha games, but it is not the be-all end-all in terms of the credit card power. So let's begin. Beginner-friendly and very useful units. The most underrated character when Genshin Impact first came out because so many people thought he was garbage. It's going to be Bennett. Now, he is sitting at the top of all four stars. I think everyone recognizes him as one of the top three, if not the top one, four-star character in the game. As I'm recording this video, he is currently available rated up on the Albedo banner, and the Albedo banner is a very, very good banner. Now, the reason why this character is so good is one, because his utility passive allows you to farm materials for free as a bonus every 16 hours. Normally, other characters are every 20 hours, so he is a short cooldown bonus, which is very, very nice. On top of that, he will also have a heal inbuilt to him. He has a damage boost inbuilt to him, and he's pyro. And on top of that, guys, the healing and the damage boost ultimate that he has is going to be one that cleanses you. Now, cleanse is a bit of a difficult mechanic if you are new to RPGs, but if you have an element on you, which you don't want, which is debuffing you, you can actually remove that from you by simply using Bennett's ultimate, which is a very, very useful ability. Now, this doesn't work with all elements, but it is compatible with a lot of different elements, which is why he's so useful. Even at level one, just having that ultimate can be useful. Naturally, you do want to invest in Tim because the higher level he goes, the bigger damage boost he's going to give to your allies, as well as the more healing he will provide for the team. Next up, we have got Mona. Now, Mona is very popular for the wrong reasons, but Mona is very good for traveling across the world. If you want to explore, she's one of the fastest units to travel across water, one of the fastest to travel across land, because she lets you go into this puddle mode, which goes zoom, 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 zoom. And on top of that, she has one of the best utility passes in the game, 25% chance to refund your materials when you are trying to send weapons. This is the equivalent of saving resin. And to top it off as a support or a main DPS character, she does a lot of damage. Her ultimate is there to increase the damage the enemy takes, which is one of the best abilities in the game as a support or even as a main DPS. She does a lot of damage. She gets her ultimate up very quickly because in order to build her, you want to be building a bit of energy recharge on her as that energy recharge is also converted into more damage or hydro damage for her, which is also very, very good. And her elemental skill is a taunt. Now taunt, for those of you guys again unfamiliar with these terminologies or these phrases 
is you have, let's say this cup is her elemental skill. You have all the little mobs around here. They're going to be attracted to this cup or this taunt and they will keep attacking it and take damage in turn. And they will not chase after you. They will not target you as long as you're not within the nearby vicinity or you're far, far enough away and the monster are close enough to the taunt. They will take damage from this taunt. And that is such a useful, useful ability. So for that reason, Mona, honestly, I don't really see any drawbacks for her. She's probably the only character where I can safely say every aspect of her kit, elemental skill, ultimate, utility passive, her level up ascension talents, etc, etc, are all top, top, top tier. Her numbers are top tier as well. So for me, Mona, surprise, I'm not going to say Zhongli, but Mona is, in my opinion, the best overall character in the game. I think by far she is head and shoulders above everyone else. If we're looking at all aspects of the game, traveling, utility, just crowd control, ultimate damage, she is just top tier in everything. Now, the next up, we have another Hydra character. It's going to be Sing Chu. Now, Sing Chu is also similar to Mona in the sense that his utility passive is actually great. It's going to save you a little bit of resin. It has a chance to refund your talent materials, which is amazing. That's the only ability right now because Mona is weapon ascension materials, which Albedo at the very end of the top row can actually do as well. But Sing Chu is for talent materials. Now, talents are going to be your skill levels for your abilities. The higher your skill level, the more damage it's going to do or the more effective healing or support, supportiveness, utility, whatever it gives, it's going to do that better at higher levels. So Sing Chu is a character, even just for his utility passive is really, really valuable. But on top of that, guys, his elemental skill and his ultimate as a supportive ability is phenomenal. It's very, very, very good. It increases your resistance to being interrupted and will also increase damage done and it will give you a little bit of healing as well for all of your allies. Very, very good. Now, one of the most popular characters, if not the most popular characters when it comes to who is the best in terms of combat, it's going to be Venti. Now, Venti is a five-star character. Mona is also a four-star character. Five star character, beg your pardon. We have got the Bennett and Sing Chu, the py Pyro on the far left, and then the middle blue one with the blue hair. That is a four star character. Those two are four star characters that are both amazing. Mona's five star, Venti is a five star, and then we've got Gene next to Venti, who's a five star. And we also have Albedo next to Gene, who's also a five star character. Now, Venti is one of, if not the most useful, not necessarily the strongest, but definitely the most useful five star in the game because his ultimate is one of the most obnoxious crowd control ultimates in the game it will suck up all your small enemies up and if you have knocked over any large enemies it will suck them up into this sort of tornado of sorts and cyclone rather and it's, it's just going to be obnoxious all of them are grouped up together and when everyone's grouped up together you can wail on them you can do so much damage and it's, it's just a good time. If you have lots of damage, Venti is the one that will supplement that and make all your damage very efficient and focused into one area. On top of that, he's also very good for traveling because he can send you high up into the air. He will let you glide up into the air and float for a little bit, which will let you traverse terrain a lot easier. And his utility passive is, you know, where he kind of falls back a little bit. It's all he offers is a little bit of stamina reduction for gliding which is you know it's not that useful at the end of the day and at, on top of that his main damage if you want to build him as main dps guys i actually think a lot of people are sleeping on this character venti he can do some of the most insane dps in the game if you invest in him and build him to be a dps the thing with venti though is so many people already understand how valuable his ultimate is as a crowd control ultimate they just keep him at like level 50, level 60. It doesn't even matter what level he is. As long as the ultimate is actually doing the crowd control, that's really all that matters. But Venti actually has very high damage scaling in the game. So I advise people don't sleep on that because he can do a lot of bonus damage to support your team as well. Jean. Now, Jean is a jack of all trades. She can be a main damage dealer. She can be a support DPS or she can be a flat out healer. And she doesn't require a lot of investment if you want to make her a healer. And on top of that, she is the only character in the game that has an active use with her elemental skill or any 
any part of the kit really to consistently do fall damage or wall damage. Now fall damage and wall damage are when you knock the enemy into the sky and they drop and they hit the ground and then they take a percentage HP of their of their HP, total HP is lost. So it's a HP cut, which is an insane mechanic or wall damage is exactly the same thing except you just knock them into the wall. Now her elemental skill has a very high chance of staggering opponents, which is also huge. Staggering opponents means to interrupt them from attacking you. She is amazing for that. She's one of the best for that. And her healing is one of, if not the best in the game. I know a lot of people contest that, but I do think her healing is the best in the game because her ultimate, when she heals just like Bennett, she has a cleanse. If you are imbued with very negative elements on you that are debuffing you, Jean can actually cleanse that from you with her ultimate, which I think is superb. It's a very, very, very good ability. And again, HP cuts at level one, you can have a Jean. If you are going up against a level 90 enemy, you throw them up into the air they drop down they will take like 40,000 damage which is an insane amount of damage for a level one character but of course it's a percentage HP cut she's the only one in the game that can actively do that so she is a very very special talent otherwise apart from that her utility talent is you know a cooking bonus which unfortunately is not the greatest low-key the cooking bonus in the game guys is kind of sexist they're all women so you know I, I don't really appreciate that but Outside of that, she is a fantastic character. Her whole kit is super easy to use. You can build her in so many different ways, use different artifacts on her. She can go into essentially any team and be super helpful. So I think for that reason, she is superb and definitely one of the characters you want to be looking out for. The next one we have is Albedo. Now, Albedo is a limited character just like Venti. Venti and Albedo, when their limited rate up banners are gone, you will not be able to summon for them. Venti, as of making this video, is currently not available in any form of summons i do believe he should be coming back within the next three to four months and when that happens guys you will probably want to summon for venti because his crowd control is really just that good but albedo albedo as i touched on earlier is kind of like mona he has a utility passive which gives you a chance instead of refunding materials will give you a chance to duplicate materials now duplicating is always going to be better than refunding because it's going from bottom up instead of top down so bottom up chances of increasing your rewards or your return is always very very nice like if you are able to duplicate a purple or a legendary drop or a craftable item that's a really big deal because saving you a lot of resin from having to farm the smaller pieces to craft into the bigger pieces later on on top of that albedo a lot of people don't really like him, but for me, I think he's super straightforward to play. He's super clean to play. You drop his elemental skill. You can switch off him if you want to, and he's not your main damage dealer. You can switch on to any other character. And based on his defense, defense is very easy to build for in this game, guys, because they love giving you defense stats and defense artifacts. Even at level six, guys, he's able to hit like over eight, 9,000 with his elemental skill as a supportive turret ability so even when he's not on the field he's going to give you bonus damage in the thousands in the high eight nine even ten thousand plus depending on your talent level at level six which is very easily accessible to a lot of people he is superb low investment for talents you do need to level him up you do need a good weapon on him but his weapons are very free to play friendly harbinger of dawn or festering desire both free to play weapons both very 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 good weapons and I think he's very easy to access, very beginner friendly and very simple to use. And for that reason, utility passive and his supportive ability, both superb. I think Geo is going in an upwards trend here, guys. We know Geo buffs are incoming, so he's just going to get stronger from here on out. So that is Albedo. Those are, in my opinion, I wouldn't say the six best units in the game. But I would say the six most useful units in the game. Those six characters there, they will offer you something that no one else can really offer you to the same degree in terms of utility passes, being useful in adventuring and being useful as crowd control or supportive ability and enhancing your damage or enhancing your other character's ability to succeed. So for me, if I if you had to ask me who are the top three characters in the game, it would be number one would be Mona, number two would be Venti, and number three would be Jean. So these are the three best five stars in the game, in my opinion. It might be different for other people, but for me, I think more so than damage right now, what we need the most is having crowd control, utility, all of these things that will enhance your gameplay. 
I think is more important than having massive amounts of damage because massive amounts of damage eventually is going to be diminishing returns. Like if the enemy has, let's say, 50,000 HP and you can deal 3 million damage, well, that's a, that's a big surplus of damage that you really don't need. Right, let's move on into the damage carries. Now, if you are rolling for a character that hits hard and hits like a truck, Number one is going to be Diluc, and easy to play, by the way, guys. There are other DPS characters in the game, but if you are new, once again, to gacha games and RPGs, the other characters, while they are very strong, like Klee or Tartalia, they're not very straightforward to play with. Beidou is another one. They're not very straightforward to play with, especially if you're new to these games. So, Diluc is very easy. You mash a bunch of buttons. He swings his sword. He does big PP damage. Razor, also the same. Big PB damage, he has a big sword, you swing it around, his ultimate is very simple, it makes him stronger and makes his attacks faster, so he's a very, very, very straightforward character, and he's lightning. But yeah, Diluc is a 5-star character, he has some of the highest base stats in the game, and he does a lot of damage. Pyro mixed with Ice, or Cryo, or Pyro mixed with Hydro, does a lot of damage, guys, it's one of the damage reactions in the game, but Elemental Reaction is a little bit confusing if you are new to this genre, so I won't get too much into that. All you need to know is that they, they do a lot of damage. So, Diluc does a lot of damage. He is pretty much regarded as the best 5-star DPS in the Standard Banner. So, if you are looking for Standard Banner summons, Diluc is the character you are hoping to pull, because he is going to be able to carry you through a lot, and I mean a lot, of content. Razor, he is a four-star character. He has a very useful utility passive increase or rather decreases stamina consumption by 20%. He is his electro base and he also wields a claymore, big two-hand PP sword and does a lot of damage. Basically focuses on his normal attack. Is It's a very, very simple playstyle. So I do recommend if you do get him, have a lot of fun. Have a lot of fun. Kaching is next up. Kaching is a sword user. She is a five-star character. I would say Kaching while she is a very good character and she's very straightforward to play, Electro right now is not the strongest element in the world. So she is probably on the weaker side of five stars. I do think she is still one of the best characters in the game. But compared to other five stars in the game, for what her purpose is, she is mainly a DPS. You can't really play her any other way other than a damage per second carry. She is probably a little bit inferior to the likes of Tartalia, Diluc, or Klee. But I do think she is still really, really good and most likely better than most of the other four-star characters in the game as a five-star. Next up, we have got Fischl. Fischl plays with a bow. A lot of people do not like bow gameplay, but she is very, very straightforward. You press her elemental skill. She will summon a Thunderbird that will literally pew, pew, pew next to you and shoot the enemies for you. So there's no aiming regarding that. Her auto attack is also very straightforward. Her normal attack when she fires off her bow is very, very straightforward. You don't have to aim all the time. You can just be near the enemies and shoot them and her aim is pretty good. There are other bow characters in the game where the aim kind of goes all over the place and it's a very big pain to play with them. But Fischl is a very simple one. Next up, we've got the free-to-play character, the Traveler. Now, the Traveler, whether you're going for the green version, the gold version, and most likely the purple version is incoming next, the Traveler can play multiple different elements. However, you should treat these all as separate characters because investing in them, you need to level each of their, their talent abilities, each of their skills separately. So if you're going for the Geo version or the Animo version, they do have separate talents. However, ascending them is very, very easy. You get all the materials for free. You get Constellation 6 on these characters for free. Constellations make your character stronger. This is the only character that every single player will be able to access Constellation 6 of. And as a result, Constellation 6 also boosts your elemental skill and your ultimate levels. It's a really big deal because a very easy way to access relatively large damage numbers. My recommendation, guys, is to go for the Geo version of the Traveler. However, if you don't have Sucrose, if you don't have Venti or you don't have Gene, then the Animo version is definitely going to be the character you need because you do need Animo in multiple situations. It's a very, very useful element. So whether you go for the green version or the gold version or the electro version in the future, 
doesn't really matter. They're all very, very good, underrated character. And of course, whether you pick the boy or the girl, doesn't matter. They're exactly the same in all ways, shapes, and forms. Right, we've got healers and healers who are also support. Some of them can enhance your damage. Some of them will enhance your defensive capabilities. But mainly what they are here for is to heal you. As you guys know, Bennett, I've already mentioned on him, Bennett is a healer. Barbara is a healer that you will get for free to play. So don't worry about if you're worried about, oh, do I need to roll for a healer? You don't need to worry about that because eventually as you play, as you hit certain levels in the game, you will get Barbara for free. Now, she's not the best healer in the world, but she's better than nothing. So, <laughs> she's better than nothing. Let's move on to Diona. Diona is a four-star character. All of these are four-star characters except for Chi-Chi, who is number four, and then Jean, who I touched on earlier, who is a five-star character. But Diona is a four-star character, has one of the strongest shields in the game at mid-game, and then she also heals you. She also provides Cryo, which is a superb, superb element for reacting with Hydro, with Electro, and of course with Pyro, it does a lot of damage. Cryo is super, super useful. And Diona is one of the best four-star characters in the game as a result. I do recommend people invest into her, take her up to at least level 60, give her some good HP artifacts or healing bonus artifacts so that her heals do heal you a lot because unlike Jean and unlike Chi Chi, she will not heal your entire party. Bennett is the same thing. Bennett and Diona, they do not unfortunately heal your entire party at the same time, unlike Barbara, Chi Chi and Jean, who are all burst healers. They all have an ultimate that when you activate it and then you proc their healing, it will literally heal everyone at the same time in your party, which is super, super useful. So you don't have to keep switching into the small area where you're being healed. Let's move on to Chi Chi. Now, Chi Chi has recently come under fire. I was originally, and I have always not really been the biggest fan of Chi Chi. She is my least wanted five star, but she's the only five star I'm missing now from the standard banner. So I would like to pull her. However, I do think Chi Chi is by far the weakest five star in the game. She is purely a healer and a not so great provider of the cryo element. She does not apply it consistently and she requires a lot of gacha weapons or gacha investment to make the most out of her. Her constellations are also extremely redundant unless you're really, really, really bad at the game. You have to be really, really, really bad at the game to need her constellations. And unfortunately, I do not think she is that great as a five star. That does not mean she is a bad character though. She's still a five star character and every single five star character is good. So she is still a good healer. She can heal a lot. The only downside with her is that when you are healing with her, you need to be doing damage with her very, very frequently. And as a result of that, you know, it's you're losing out on damage as a result. Her reactions, her elemental skill, her costs, everything is quite on the high side. I do think she could do with a little bit of buffing to make her healing a bit more consistent and more reliable. And her application of cryo definitely needs to be way more consistent. So if you are looking for a healer that can give you the cryo element, I would recommend Diona because Diona has a shield on top of that as well and you can get cryo off her very easily with her, her elemental skill or even her charge attack. Whereas Chi Chi, you have to wait for the long cooldown elemental skill and it intermittently surrounds you and gives you a cryo swirl, which is, is, is it's just not too amazing. Then we have Jean, who is another healer. It was always between Chi Chi and Jean, who is the best healer. But again, Jean, she cleanses debuffs off you. She can do a HP cut. Her crowd control is insane with her stagger ability. And then her heal will heal absolutely everyone in your party. And if that healing is not enough, because let me tell you that healing is almost always more than enough, you can always switch to someone else because she has ticking heal. She has a whole area of healing, which will also damage enemies that try and enter that area as well. On top of that, that you can switch characters in and out of to give them a bit more healing as well so Jean is superb and then we have Noel now Noel is technically free to play because everyone has a banner that will guarantee that you can summon for Noel I personally don't always recommend going for that because we have something in the game called a pity system now the banner at the beginning of the game called the beginners banner which guarantees that you get Noel I think is a little bit of a trap because what it's doing is taking away from your pity and what a pity does is when you do X amount of rolls, let's say 90 rolls, you are guaranteed a 5 star character. Every 90 rolls you're guaranteed a 5 star character. Now on Noel's banner, the beginner banner, you get 8 for the, for the price of 8 summons, 
you get 10 characters. Or not necessarily 10 characters, you get 10 items which can be characters or weapons. However, this does not count towards any pity for a 5 star. So essentially, if you do end up doing 2 multi pulls on this banner, you will be losing 16 pulls worth of pity into another banner which is something you may want to consider before pulling for this banner you can of course get five stars on this banner the beginner banner so if you are re-rolling you should be pulling on this banner because you are going to be saving yourself some extra pulls and ideally you want to be pulling a five star on that banner but if you cannot and you just don't want to be bothered with the re-rolling hassle then i don't actually recommend pulling on the beginner's banner but noelle she is an okay healer she does need a bit of constellations to help her with the healing but otherwise, she gives you a shield, she has a geo element, she does okay damage, she has a lot of AoE when she ults, and again, she can heal you. So that's, you know, she's alright, she's alright. At Constellation 6 though, she is a very, very strong character. So if you do ever get her to Constellation 6, she is a superb character. The next row are guaranteed to be free-to-play obtainable characters. So all of the characters you see there are accessible to free-to-play players. As long as you play through the game, you'll get all of these characters for free. Amber is considered to be the weakest character in the game. A lot of people trash on her. I think that she's not that bad. I don't think she's as bad as people say. She's definitely not as strong as Diluc or Bennett or as useful as them, but she still has her uses. And people have shown in the past, and people are still showing to this day, how much damage or how useful she can really be as long as you invest into her the same way you would invest into a 5-star character or a 4-star character that you want to be as your main DPS character. So I do think she's nowhere near as bad as people say, and this is why I say there are no bad characters, there are only bad players. So maybe that will upset some people, but that is my true belief. I don't think there are any bad characters in the game, just bad players who don't understand how to build the characters or just playing them wrong. But let's move on to Shangling. She is an excellent support. Shangling is another four-star character you'll be getting for free. Excellent, excellent, excellent support. We've got Barbara next. You already know about Barbara. She's going to be a healer. She is an idol. She is Jean's little sister. And that's pretty much all I can say. Her healing is okay. It's not amazing. It's nowhere near Jean's level, but it's, it's okay. It's better than nothing, and she can help you apply Hydro as well. Next up, we've got Miss Ara Ara, which is going to be Lisa. Lisa, again, a lot of people sleep on Lisa. If you are unlucky slash lucky enough to get her to Constellation 6, this character is a monster. However, Constellation 6, again, is not easily accessible. It's really only for whales because only whales will keep pulling on the standard banner. But if you ever get unlucky or lucky enough to get C6 Lisa, she is amazing. At C0, though, she's not the easiest to play with and she really does need Constellations to shine. So if anything, I actually think she is probably the weakest character and less useful than Amber in the game but you know it is what it is they're, they're, they still have their uses Kaya now Kaya is a free to play character K is one of the daddies of Genshin Impact and again he's because he's free to play guys people sleep on him I think Kaya is actually an excellent character and actually has really really good constellations very useful overall I have used him in Spiral Abyss in the hardest content in the game a lot of people do use him in the hardest content in the game even at level one he is a very very good applier of cryo low cooldown very useful ultimate so I think Kaya is very much slept upon he can be your main dps he can be support but Kaya is a character you will get for free very early on in the game and then once again we've got the main traveler which is going to be the main character that you always always have now if you are a beginner to rpgs but you're not a beginner to gacha and you plan to go ham on the gacha and you plan to whip out that credit card credit card energy well these five characters if you get them to constellation six Throughout all of their constellations, it makes them just a little bit more absurd, if not extremely broken in the game. So Diluc, his constellations all give him ridiculous damage boosts. So he will be hitting like, you know, as if Narnia is dropping onto the planet. So he he's he does a lot of damage. Klee also does an insane amount of damage. Her constellations will reduce enemies' defense. And it will do, it just does a lot of damage. So Klee is also, boom, boom, Bakudan does a, a whole ton of damage. But the reason why I didn't put her in beginner friendly main damage carries is because one, she's not even available right now. I have no idea when she's going to come back. And the other thing is to play her properly. It's a little bit confusing. You, She's a very selfish main DPS and getting reactions off with her is not as, not as straightforward as other characters. So she, she's a bit of a... You kind of have to understand how to play around with her. 
first of all. Tartaglia is exactly the same, or child, the beautiful brunette, is that brunette ginger? Oh wow, it's child ginger? I just realized this, guys. Is he ginger, guys? I don't know, but child is a hydro DPS character. He is definitely not free to play friendly. Let me put it this way. This character, if you want him to succeed, you cannot give him a free to play bow because all the free to play weapons for him are atrocious. They are horrendous and the pay to win bows are really good on him. However, if you do plan to whale and you plan to give him everything he deserves, which is all the money in the world, he hits like a monster. He has some of the most consistent damage and it is filthy. He does so much, so much damage and is a superb character. We've got Fischl. Oh, oh, by the way, Chard is also a limited banner character, so I have no idea when he's coming back. Probably, you know, mid-2021. If I had to guess, mid-2021. Next up, we've got Fischl. Now, Fischl is the only four-star character I put here at Constellation 6. At Constellation 6, Fischl... Already is a good main damage carry or support carry, but at Constellation 6, she becomes a machine gun. So her Constellation 6 will have will summon her machine gun bird, and every time you attack, the machine gun bird is going to attack with you. Doesn't have to be Fischl, it can be any character on the field, which is why she's amazing as a support or a main DPS because of that machine gun bird at Constellation 6. So very, very broken. If you do have good weapons for her, even the damage through that just goes through the roof. It is absurd. Child C6, Fischl C6 put together. One of the most broken combinations in the game. And I really, really wish I had it, but I don't. Unfortunately, I don't have Child C6. I do have C6 Fischl and C6 Fischl has made my life so much easier and so much difficult content because her bonus damage is just obscene. Next up, we have got a controversial one, but one of my favorite characters, the only character I personally have Constellation 6 is Zhongli. Now, Zhongli is a, again, very similar to Jean, Jack of all trades, but a bruiser. Insane crowd control at Constellation 6 has the ability to shield you and every time your shield gets hit, it will heal you. Also has the damage to reset your shield every time you use your ultimate. So for Constellation 6, it really does make him an insane, insane character. If you do build him correctly, he does insane damage as well with his ultimate. So he's definitely a character I feel like a lot of people have been sleeping on. But Constellation 6, I don't think anyone would contest. He's one of the best characters in the game. All the other characters do have good Constellation 6s, guys. Don't get me wrong. But I would not say the gap from them at Constellation 0 to Constellation 6 is anywhere near as big as all of these characters that you are seeing in the bottom row. So Diluc, Klee, Tartaglia, also Fischl and Zhongli. Between Constellation 0 to Constellation 6, they become a whole new character in terms of either damage or usability. So there you guys have it. Those are the characters I think you guys should be looking out for. Zhongli, Tartaglia, Klee and Venti are all limited banner characters. They will, I promise you, be coming back in the future. It's not like they're gone forever, but they will definitely definitely come back so keep your eyes peeled out for them if there are characters you like playing with ultimately guys the main thing is if you want to summon for a limited banner character make sure you test them out first because there is always an option to test them out if you hit f5 on on pc you will be able to test them out and see whether or not you actually like them i hope that has been helpful hopefully i don't see a lot of people coming in 2021 saying oh bennett is terrible i saw this tier list that says bennett or sing chu or mona or the main traveler are just not very good characters i really hope people realize that those tier lists are super outdated and super misinformed and they know that every character is viable, every character can be good, it's just that some characters are maybe more beginner friendly or more straightforward to play, and therefore are more easily accessible. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope this was helpful, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and bye bye